All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I'm Sabata Matsumoto, and um, I'm here with Henry Sigerman, and we're going to tell you about a uh, joint project with Fabian Serrier, who is unfortunately not with us, but um, together we um, came up with a code and made a scarf that has a cellular automata pattern on it that um, is a Mobius strip. So I've got that this uh, scarf up here, so I'll pass this around to you guys to play around with it while we're talking. Um, so this all started because um, Fabian had this um, really cool Kickstarter, so she wanted to buy um, an, an industrial knitting machine to make generative textiles, um, and this was a successful Kickstarter, and um, she runs a company now called Knit Yak. It's a one-woman company, um, and she started doing um, cellular elementary cellular automata scarves, and has moved on to also doing small batches of um, bits of mineral brought sets and um, quine code. Um, so she's really cool, um, and you should definitely check this out. Um, so Henry backed her Kickstarter, um, and so when it came to us getting our scarves, someone had posted on Twitter, um, geez, I wonder what would happen if we did this on a Mobius trip. And so we pulled out our computers and started coding um, and this is the story of what happened next. Um, so to begin with, so Fabian has a, um, a double bed jacquard knitting machine, and I'm not a machine knitter, I'm a hand knitter, so I can explain it a little bit better um, uh, in hand knitting terms. So this is uh, double knitting, it's a double sided knit, so it looks like it's facing um, outwards on both sides. It's typically knit with um, two colors, so this is actually the first uh, double knitting I've ever done. I had scrambled and did this last night, so I have a sample to show you. Um, so what it is, is you knit in two colors, and you knit one color on one side, and every stitch that's that color is the opposite color on the back side. So uh, I can pass this around so you can see. So this is um, sort of the basic symmetry that all of these scarves have, um, and we wanted to see how to work cellular automata to make this work. So just a little brief um, tutorial on cellular automata, or these are elementary cellular, cellular automata. Um, the idea is you have, um, I guess, three, uh, three blocks on top, and these are all combinations of black and white uh, three colored blocks, and each of those determines uh, the color underneath. So an example here, we've got white, white, white. So uh, this one corresponds to the top rule, and this one over here corresponds to the bottom rule. So we've got white, white, white. That would tell me to look for this color here, and that's white. And I move over here, I've got white, white, black. So I look for white, white, black. That's a black. So I fill in this color here, I get white, black white, I get a black one, and so on and so forth. Um, so this is the basic set of rules and how this is um, a generative textile. So, so typically, um, Fabian takes um, a random binary string as a seed and picks one of the 256 possible rules, but we wanted to do this as a Mobius strip. So that means we start with one row, and let's just assume there's raw stitches on it, um, and we go down to the bottom, and that means that this one I'd like to join smoothly to the top with a twist. So that means that I want to um, invert it and um, flip it. And that has to be the same as the initial row I started for this to be a complete cycle. Um, so we define this as um, the scarf inverse. So we start out with um, some seed, here, so 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Um, and so I need to do two actions. I need to either mirror it, so that's turning it over, so that gives me 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Um, and I also need to take its complement. So I need to go from a white stitch to a black stitch. So that's, uh, I guess, swapping the zeros and ones. So I end up with uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. So this is um, what I start with, and this is the, the scarf 
inverse of this pattern. Um, so we need not only those rows, the first and last row, to have the property that th that row is the same as its scarf inverse, but we need a set of rules for the cellular automata that, are, um, that uh, respect the scarf inverse. And it turns out there are 16 of them. Um, and so here are little, uh, this is a random binary string. It's the same random binary string for all of them. Um, and so you can see that there's a lot of really boring things and then two that look pretty. So we're going to focus on these two. This is rule 105 and rule 150. Yeah, so the, the, just to, the rules are numbered from 0 to 255 because of the eight possible, for each input string of three, three colors, you, you choose black or white, and that gives you two to the eight. Um, so yeah, 105 and, and 150 are the two rules, which are the same if you run it on the front of the scarf and the back of the scarf, which you need because the Mobius strip has only one side. Um, so these are the two that, that are possible and, uh, and are interesting. Uh, and now there's a bit of a problem. We actually needed a scarf, right? So we, we know what rule we're supposed to use, but what sequence of black and white uh, cells do we need? And in order to make a reasonable scarf, you needed about 100 stitches wide and about 1,000 long. And, and as Sabetta said, the, the line after the last line has to be the scarf inverse of the first, so it links up. Um, and this is really hard because, um, well, so, so let's think about the numbers. So how many different possible rows are there in a 100-stitch wide scarf? It's two to the 100. There's that many possible rows you could start with, so about 10 to the power of 30. And then after you go 1,000 steps uh, further, you're supposed to have ended up with something that's closely related to the thing that you started with. So why is this going to happen? And the answer is mostly it doesn't. So we cheat. Um, so how do you cheat? <laughs> So, so the way to cheat um, is to not start with just a completely random string of black and white uh, stitches for the first row, um, but to start with half random and then half which is the scarf inverse of that. So, um, so here's a, a, you know, five, uh, um, five stitches and then the scarf inverse. It's sort of hard to tell. You can't easily see the symmetry because there's two things involved here. But then once you've, once you've done this, then you have a, a line which, when you turn it over, is the same. So, uh, so what does that mean? As you run forward, it turns out that every row that you make is going to be the same after, after the, under the scarf inverse. And now you don't need to go down to the bottom and find something which is the, the same after the scarf inverse. You just have to go down to the bottom and find something that's the same. And that's easier. It's easier to find a cycle in this sort of system than it is to find uh, a very particular um, you know, you, you, you go down to some distance and then you want some transformation of this thing to be the same. It's far easier to find a cycle. Um, I, just, I, I guess I should say, you either make a Mobius strip, it could also make an annulus because it's the same after you go down here. But in particular, it can make a Mobius strip. So it's easier to make a cycle. Why is that? Well, you've got a finite set of things, 2 to the power 100 possibilities, or I guess 2 to the power 50. And then you're just wandering around in this in this space of possibilities, at some point you have to come back to where you start because there's a finite number of things to do. Um, so you can find cycles. So this is what happened when we did this. Um, so these are the different possible scarf widths. They're even because we're doing this take half of it, flip it over business. And we've only listed one cycle length here for each of these numbers. And that's because almost always, and we don't really know why, you get actually exactly the same cycle. So you start with 78 wide thing, and you do start with a random thing, and you run this forward. It goes, it goes, it goes. It goes into a loop, and the loop is always, almost always, 2 to the power 13 minus 2 long. So that's the second mystery. Where are these numbers coming from? We have no idea. Why, are there, why is there only one cycle? I mean, if you do something very, very symmetric, maybe you get something different, only differing by a factor of 2 in the cycle length. But where do these numbers come from? Why is this 16? Why is this the same as this? <laughs> what is that nine doing there? <laughs> if anybody has any ideas, let us know. OK, wait. We were trying to do this to find something that was about 100 wide and about 1,000 long. And there is one. It's there. 2 to the power of 10 minus 2 is 1,022, which is very close to 1,000. Um, so this is what we did. 
So this is just a quick animation showing. Um, so these are the two different patterns. It says 105 and 150 um, going around. The one being passed around out there is 150. And this is showing where on the pattern the um, Mobius strip is uh, joining up. Um, so I guess in the last minute I have, um, so people always ask me this question, so when I get back, is there a seam? Um, how did I do the join? And we wanted to make sure that the join, in fact, did respect the um, cellular automata itself and so that it is in pattern. So Fabian sent us a um, complete 100, or sorry, 1022 uh, rows of SARS, but I had to unpick the very last one and then I had to put it in by grafting. Sure, so this is this is something called a Kitchener stitch. Um, basically, you use uh, a loose thread to weave the top and bottom of the knits together. Um, and if you do this, uh, it's really difficult to get it to work in pattern. So I worked out a way to Kitchener in pattern, and I think that'll be my Bridges paper for next year. But uh, in answering the um, main question people ask is, yes, the seam is um, correct, and it does uh, go in pattern. So this is really a true Mobius strike. And it's really hard. Um, so with that, thank you. Questions. Literally one minute for questions before okay. coffee. So. Is, is the rule uh, periodic around so you can make a plan model out of it? It is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> one uh, more question. That was the fast one, so yeah. Were in, the, in that table when you started with a random uh, uh, row, were you always getting true periods or were some of those pre periodic? They're, they're always, you they're start always with some random junk and then you get into a loop. And it's always the same loop. So yeah, you always go through some junk. Exactly the same loop. It's always the same loop that it converges to, as far as we can tell. Yeah, so we filter out the top like 10,000 to 20,000 rows, throw them away, and only start searching for, for periods after it's settled down out of that chaotic bit. Can we take this question during coffee break? Um, Thanks, everybody. So there it is, coffee. Thank you. Join me for thanking the rest of the speakers in the session.